majority of us have to do our swim training in a public pool and just compose some challenges. Unless you're really fortunate to have a lane to yourself, then you are going to be sharing that space with fellow swimmers. And if you're trying to stick to a precise training plan, that gets a little bit tricky. I think it's fair to say that all of us here at GTN have had our fair share of public swimming experiences. Some good, some less so. But as a result, we have learned a few tricks that work, which I'm going to be sharing with you in a moment. And as you can probably see, this pool behind me here at Player Tash Resort in Fortaventura is not your average public pool, but that's not going to stop me sharing my tips and making you better prepared for your next public swim session so you can make the most out of your very valuable time. Before you even get to the pool, it's a good idea to check the list of kit that might be required. Obviously, appropriate swimwear goes without saying, but some pools insist on you taking your cap, for example. So if you're not sure, it's a good idea to chuck one in your kit bag so that you're ready and prepared. And other than that, there's not many pieces of kit that I can imagine they would insist on you bringing, but there are a few pieces of kit which sometimes aren't allowed. For example, we recently put out a video on GTN of how to swim with a snorkel, and quite a few of you guys commented beneath that, saying you weren't actually allowed to use a snorkel in your pool. So so it is a good idea checking and if you missed that video then why not go and check it out and whilst you're there give GTN a like and a follow and then the swim paddles they're usually discretionary but it's still probably not a good idea to turn up with paddles the size of bucket lids and try to make your way down a really busy public lane It might sound obvious but when you turn up to your public swimming pool you need to check which direction the lanes are going in if you think I'm crazy, if you live in the rest of Europe or the USA, yes, in the UK we do actually swim in alternate directions. And there will usually be a sign at the end of the lane telling you that. And wherever you are, it's a good idea to check the speed of the lane, as most will be labelled slow, medium and fast. And here you need to ignore your ego and be honest to yourself as to which lane you're best suited to. And I know some people's perception of fast might be very different to somebody else's. So if you observe for a moment, it can end up saving you a lot of frustration when you're actually in the middle of your session if you found that correct lane. And if you're really lucky, it might be fairly quiet in the pool. If there's just one other person in your lane, why not ask them if you can share and just go up and down on either side? And that way, it really won't matter if you're swimming at different speeds. And I personally find that if you're already doing that, then someone else is less likely to join your lane. It's a bit of a trick that works, although I don't want too many people to know as it might not work so well. If you are able to have a bit of flexibility with your training, then it's a good idea to go and speak to the lifeguard at the pool and find out when the quieter periods are. And if you can tailor your really tough key sessions to be a session that's when the pool's really empty, you'll get a lot more out of it. You can stick to your specific times and work really hard. And then for your other sessions that maybe aren't quite so key, it doesn't matter if it's so busy and you can still adapt them slightly within. If say you're swimming in the fast lane and even that is too busy or too slow, think about how you can swim slower but for the same effort. So that could be say adding in some drag pants for resistance, doing purely pull work, so taking out the legs or flipping it around and just doing some kick work. Anything that's still going to have you working at a high intensity but naturally just going a bit slower. Realistically though, even if you're in a lane with similar paced swimmers, you're probably going to find that you're going at different intensities or taking a rest at a different time. So with that in mind, you need to be mindful of others and it will be far more enjoyable experience for all of you if you are. And when you come into the wall at the end of a repetition, just make sure you move to the side of the lane so there's plenty of space for the next person to turn as there's nothing more frustrating than coming in in the middle of a hard bit, you need to turn on the wall and there's three people across the whole lane stood there chatting. or Maybe there's one person, but they're stood in the middle. You go to go one side of them, they go that way as well. It gets a little bit awkward. And I have used this trick in the past. So say it's busy, but people could move out of the way and they haven't, then come in, do your flip turn, but make sure you just finish shy of them. Then you'll make sure that nobody gets hurt. And if you do it with a big splash, they'll usually get the hint. The biggest problem with swimming with others is communication. It's not like you can let someone know that you want to pass when you're swimming as you can when you're cycling or running. So you actually have to communicate to a slightly physical way, but I'm not meaning pushing people out the way here. I'm talking about just tapping their toes. So if the swimmer in front genuinely is a bit slower, they should hopefully stop when you get to the end of the lane and let you pass. If they don't quite get the hint, then it's fine to tap their toes a couple of more times. But if all else fails, then you're going to have to try and overtake them. And if the pool's fairly quiet and you've got enough acceleration, just pull out and see if you can go around them and tuck back in again as soon as you're past. And if that's not an option, then you can actually cut off a little bit of the length and turn just in front of them. So do a dead turn, but that way you can get in front. 
front crawl is probably the most user-friendly stroke if you are sharing a lane with a lot of other swimmers. But let's say you want to do a bit of breaststroke, then just be aware of how wide your kick is and also keep an eye out for others who might have a rogue, extremely wide kick because that whip kick action can be pretty painful if you come into contact with it. And then there's backstroke, which obviously you can't see where you're going when you're on your back. So be aware of the ceiling if you are swimming indoors, as some pools even have diagonal lines going in the wrong direction. So just check that first, because you could find yourself going up the wrong side of the lane without even realizing. And whatever stroke you're doing, use the lane ropes and that black line down the middle to guide you. And then there's one stroke I haven't mentioned. Yep, it is butterfly. It might sound shudders down your spine, but it can be very useful. If you can manage, say, a couple of lengths of really strong butterfly, it's quite intimidating and it might deter others from joining your lane and maybe even make one or two of the swimmers in your lane move over. And if you can find a couple of you, or maybe even three, to do some butterfly, it'll soon create some space. And I have to admit, I'm slightly guilty of this one. And there is something about power in numbers. So say you've got a few friends who you know swim at a similar pace to you and you want to do the same session, then go to the pool together because you're more likely to end up with a lane to yourselves and almost a mini squad if you are training at that same pace. The most important thing to take with you when you go to your next public swim session is your patience. So go there open-minded with the ability to adapt your session if you need to and you'll find you get so much more out of your training. But maybe you've got some tips or tactics that work when you go to your public pool. If so, then do share them with us in the comments section below. And give us a like and a follow over at GTN.